Boom! Welcome, folks. We're live. I'm all alone. Another Monday. Uh, in uh, you know, we're not. Everybody says they're under quarantine. You're not under quarantine unless you potentially being exposed. They tell you to go home, quarantine yourself for 14 days. We're all under stay-at-home orders. That's what we're under. And then, but I'm essential, so I uh, can go out and go to work and all that. But right now, work is awesome because they're letting us telework, which is important to help prevent the spread. Um, Audrey is teleworking. She was teleworking at least a week before I was. They were they were proactive. Uh, she's out right now at the store trying to get some groceries. Adam's in the house. Finally, I'm just talking to nobody, Adam. Finally, somebody's here. Yep, stay at home orders. That's right, Adam. So you're not, everybody says, well, we're under quarantine. You're not under quarantine unless you've actually been put under quarantine. And that's typically those folks who have been exposed. Grant McIntosh out in the yard working on the garden, and he still found time to jump in and say, hey, thank you, Mr. Grant McIntosh. Glad you dropped in to visit with us today. Got a pretty uh, free-flowing live stream today. Let's see if we can get a couple more people in here. I'm hoping Mr. Stanley or, oh, Mo, Moser boys in the house. You're not under quarantine, Mo. You're not under quarantine. Don't tell that story. You've been exposed, or are you under uh Stay at home orders. Yeah, they prefer that. They prefer people not use quarantine unless they've actually quarantined. Honestly, I think I was unofficially exposed. Unofficially? So what's the difference between being officially exposed and unofficially? And and that's not cool if you have were exposed. That is not cool at all. Uh I I potentially could have been. You know, there was a where I work on our floor, uh, there was an individual that later tested positive. That was there on a day I was there before they got tested. And we used the same latrines and walked the same hallway. So, yeah, potentially I might have been. But it wasn't enough for them to say, hey, you need to quarantine. So, we're good. Uh, so, the government and CDC said, hey, guess what? You should all be wearing masks when you leave because just talking to somebody can spread it. Uh, so, when you're out and about around people, you should wear a mask. What are you guys seeing? I wore a mask for the first time Sunday, driving out to my daughter's house to work on her house with her, which we did Saturday too. We'll get into that later, maybe. And uh, we we had a little mask that you know you're supposed to wear. My daughter had some previously from a different event and gave us some. And so we went to Lowe's to pick up some stuff and put the mask on. There was probably. One out of every four people actually wearing a mask. The other three out of four were not wearing masks. So I guess they didn't care. Um, I really had to think about it. I'm like, man, that's my man card. I, dude, I'm not scared of a little cold. Why? I'm going to wear a mask. And then I'm older now. And I'm, I'm a little smarter, I hope. And I thought, you know, it's not just to protect you, but it's to protect your loved ones and those around you. And other people you come in contact with or may. So wear the dang mask, John. So I wore the dang mask. I was surprised uh, in Lowe's, and I didn't go in any other store, so I don't know about the rest. But in Lowe's, like one out of three employees wore masks. It's like this guy's got a mask on, but those four over there or three over there don't have a mask on. If I'm an employer in a retail establishment where I know my employees come in contact with each other and patrons that are coming in to shop, my policy is going to be, you want to work today, you wear a mask. Why not? When the CDC and everybody else said, hey, you need to wear a mask, why would you not as an employer? Uh, I did, We read somewhere where Lowe's, it's at the store over there, it was optional. They provided them for their employees. No, it's not optional. Either you follow uh, the safe standards or hit the road, Jack. That's old grumpy old man talking, but... I don't want to wear a damn mask. It wasn't comfortable. It's hot. And, but I did because that's the right thing to do. All right. Now I'm going to read you guys' comments because I haven't read a single one of them. Uh, let's see. Honestly, I think I was going to Okay. I'm under my brother's and Jay's quarantine. I mean, I can only be in this live stream until – you're in this live stream until it's over with, Mo. That's why – that's when you – that's how it rolls. 
<laughs> Adam, my job said an employee in the office building tested positive. Is that officially exposed? No, yeah, you're same as I just explained my situation. There's another employee that did test positive. We walked the same halls on the same day, used the same bathroom. I said latrine maybe because military, but bathroom. So, yeah, it could have been just like you're saying. You could have been if somebody where you work was. Uh, I wore my sun buff while fishing the other day. That's good, Adam. And actually, that sun buff is all you need, they say, in casual, like, I'm standing here, you're standing there, we're talking to each other. That's all the protection you need. Better than not having no protection. So uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see a bunch of people wearing them. I've got them. But my daughter gave us a couple of regular masks, so we're wearing those, I guess. My father-in-law shaved his beard to wear a mask to the doctor's office. Ooh, that's serious. Now, I didn't, as you can tell, I didn't shave the beard to wear the mask. I figure the beard is part of the protection, right? It's a layer of protection. The mask comes around, and then at that seal point, I got some extra beard there to, to help uh, seal it up, maybe. I don't know. That sounds like pure bull crap, but I'm sticking to it. All right. It says we got five people in the house. I see three people posting. That means, let me do math, two people haven't said shit. Where's everybody at? That's a good question, Mo. Where's Mr. Stanley Orchard at? Where's Mr. Stanley Orchard? Uh, WTF Mike. Um, was it Nick? One of the guys said, hey, I'll be there today. I I'm getting off early or something like that. So, yeah, go ahead. Get him. Get a mo. <clears throat> what do we got to talk about now? What do we got to talk about? What do we got to talk about? I just went off on a tangent there. I didn't even really mean to. So how, hey, are you guys hearing anything new on closures? I'll give you an update. San Antonio, as far as I know, Canyon Lake that I usually fish, no closures yet. Um, and then the two, they call them the Twin Lakes. So these two lakes are just south of town. They're power plant cooling lakes, so they're owned by the power plant company. Uh, but the power plant company contracts another company, Thousand Trails, to manage the park, the ramps, the camping, and all that stuff. So what they've done is they've closed it, the facility, Seabricks 45, Lurkin. All right, thank you. Dual battery setup is awesome. But I'm just not getting a chance to get out there and get on the water and do anything yet, man. So um, we'll see. We'll see, man. I haven't got it out there. And no, I don't have an XJ yet. <laughs> um, <laughs> excuse me. Where was I going? Seabricks, man, you messed me up now. I was going somewhere with that thought. Oh, goodness gracious. So... The, we got Calaveras and Brawny. They're both power, point, power plant cooling lakes, like I said. And what they've decided is they're not going to have any overnight stay, so no camping or nothing. So they're open from 6 in the morning to 8. Typically, in the summertime, they'll open from 6 to 10, and they allow overnight camping. They have some RV slots. All that, <laughs> all that is uh, temporarily kiboshed. They're open. You can go in there with your boat, and you can go fishing. And this weekend, I don't know what it's like where you're from, but we moved. So I lived in Texas back in the 90s in El Paso, right, four years. And then, you know, Army went away, came back in 2000. I've been here since. So now it's been 20 years almost. This year will be 20 years. And I've never been anywhere where people do what they do here on Easter weekend. They go and camp. Okay, that's fine. But they go and camp in the local parks, like downtown, a big grassy park where you play football and all that. These people will go down there and stake out areas and set up tents and camp all weekend for Easter. And the place gets trashed, uh, but a lot of people do a cleanup, so that's good. Um, and that also goes to these lakes. They'll do the same thing at the lakes. They'll be completely packed with people. Well... They have closed those two lakes starting, I think it's Thursday evening through till Monday or Tuesday, just so that doesn't happen, right? And I think the parks downtown are closing because they don't want, because that's a ton of people all up on top of each other. So they're being proactive on that. So I like that. So those lakes are still open. 
six to eight. But for this coming weekend, Easter weekend, they're going to be shut down. Is it this weekend or weekend after? Which are weekend? It's coming weekend. Uh, they're going to be shut down. You're not going to get on those lakes. Um, but other than that, locally, I haven't heard of any other uh, shutdowns here. What are you guys hearing out there? Thank you, Mo. Appreciate the shares. Mo, you guys hearing about any late closures? I did hear... So talking to the aunt and uncle in Michigan the other day, they had said something about only like two people allowed on the boat. I'm like, what? Then shortly after that, we saw a news report in Michigan that they have shut down boating. I don't know the details. Uh, maybe somebody comes on from, thanks Grant, somebody comes on from up in Michigan can fill us in. Maybe uh, Steve Hall and Ash will come in and give us an update because that was kind of one of those is said it on Twitter or something so you don't know if it's really true or not. And that's why I was hoping for people to jump in and give us updates. Um, where the heck is Stanley Orchard at? All right, guys. You got to bear with me here a minute. What time is it? Yeah. So I told you Audrey ran off to the store. I've got some uh, brisket burnt ends on the smoker that have to come off, right? The, when you're smoking, there's not a time, you know, it's just, it is when it is and it is. So I'm going to run off screen for about two minutes, get them burnt ends in the house. And then I'll be right back here and I'll check with Adam. As a matter of fact, Adam here, I'm going to give you this. Boom. So I know where I'm at guys. I'll be right back. Don't leave. I'll be right back. Get the burnt ends out, baby. I'm coming back. I won't go on that long. Boom. All right. So Adam said New Jersey did some weird stuff. They opened up trout season early and then closed all county and state run parks, including those that have trout stock. Ah, that stinks. What else we got? A tournament with 28 boats got shut down at Mixon and told to dis disperse by game wardens. Another 20 boat tournament had tickets laid off, and every two every tow vehicle that they came in for the win. Oh, they had ticketed them. Oh shoot, they ain't playing. I have not heard anything that bad. Wow. Yeah, I haven't seen anything like that here. Uh, as far as, and I was wishing Stanley was here, but as far as I know about the coast, uh, Mustang Island State Park is still closed. And it's a beach because one of their employees tested positive. And the Packery Jetties still closed, as far as I know. Um, but the Padre Island National Seashore is still open, as far as I know. So, who knows? We both shared. All right, let's see where we're at. Okay, guys. Hey, do you want to see some fishing gear? Someone give me a hell yeah or a thumbs up if you want to see some fishing gear. Some new fishing gear. 
new to me. I'm waiting. I don't know what the delay time is between me saying stuff. My club held a 17 person tournament yesterday in a remote lake with no issues, huh? Yeah, just practice those good, you know, six feet apart, all that kind of stuff. All right, so I got a hell yeah, so we're going. Y'all remember, if you don't, you should. Uh, I was getting the uh, Mystery Tackle Box, right? The pro inshore version because I wanted saltwater gear. And my wife had signed me up for it. I got a total of four boxes because that's what she signed me up for. And then I did not renew that because I wanted to see what else was out there. So uh, Triple Tell Fishing TV, Will, who isn't here uh, but is often, um, did a review of these coastal salt boxes. And he liked them. He recommended them. And so I figured, well, let me check it out. Well, first things first, I got one. And that that that's a big box. As a matter of fact, watch this. Look at this comparison. And I'm not bagging on this. You haven't even seen what's in it yet. It might not be that good. But there's your size comparison, right? That's a big box. That's a big box. So let's see what's in that big box. Oh. Because I got a hell yeah. Right, I want to set it over here. Okay. First things first, boom, they're going to send you their decal that you want. They want you to put on your boat or wherever. All right, cool. Um, These are really cool, right? Nobi, soft baits, 100%, and then it's Japanese writing. So... But if you look close at those, those are a squid imitation. I have not opened these. I don't they have an odor to them. Yeah, they got an odor, but plasticky. There you go. There's your squid, right? So they're not completely detached down here. All right? And they got a little pocket there for your hook to set in. So pretty neat looking uh, soft plastic for squid. Uh, not sure where I would use that. I guess I guess you could use it in yeah, plastic smells yeah. Uh, I guess you could use it inshore, you know. But I haven't seen too many people here use squid inshore. So that's one. That's pretty neat. And then man, look at these things. The captain's choice. Okay. These are little skirts, right? They look almost like a jig, but they're a skirt. There's something you'd troll with. You can see the hook out over on this side, right, right there. Um, I'll open one up just so we can see how it's rigged. I don't think this is multiple lures. I think this is a tandem. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. Okay. No, they are multiple. So there's three with little rubber skirts on them, right? And they all end in a swivel with a clip. Okay. Oh, wow. That, this is just weird. I need to... Let's dig a little deeper. See, I opened this box already, of course. I looked at it. I was like, that's freaking cool. But I didn't dig this deep. Matter of fact, these are... No, these are attached to each other. So all three of them run together. Okay? So that's one package of them. Okay? And it says saltwater fishing lures. Captain's choice. Don't know. Never seen them before. But guess what? There's one. Two, same thing. Three, same thing. Four, same thing. It could be flounder teasers. I don't know. I've never used a flounder teaser. Five. Five of them. Okay, five of them. Now, that's pretty awesome. Look at this one. Again, we got some kind of squid imitation with a sp little spinner on it. I'm not taking one of these out of the box yet either. Oh, that's really weird because not only does it have a spinner, but these little guys right here are usually a little float you see like on pompano rigs, right? But this is not a pompano rig. This definitely looks like something. Look at the size of that hook, right? This definitely is something you're trolling behind the boat offshore. Right, so you're going offshore fishing, trolling for something big. Okay, so there's one of those. 
No, no, no. I'm sorry. There's two of those. Ah, wait. I'm sorry. There's three of those. All right. So we have five of the first, three of those. Okay. We're going to change it up a little bit. We got some mustad. Um, it just says quantity five. They look like B cut. So it comes in a little container like that. All right. Let's open these bad boys up. I am again. I haven't opened none of this yet, so I don't know exactly what we got. Yeah, they're just little beak hooks. I don't know what else you'd call them. They're they're offset, right? Look at them that way. You see, they're kind of offset to the side. I usually use if I'm just using hooks, especially see how the eyelet's been back. I'm usually using a uh, a circle hook. So I don't know. I might use those. I don't know. That only one of those. All right. We're gonna have four or five of those. Now, next. Next up. Soft lures again. I'm trying to read if I can read the stuff behind it. Those guys look really good. They look weighted. Let's see what it says about them. One thing about this stuff, a lot of this stuff isn't brand names that you're like, oh, yeah, I know that name. And maybe they are. Maybe they're something that's offshore that I don't see much. So this is Soft Lure. They're eight centimeters long. They have hooks. And there's two pieces. So let's see. Man, I haven't been packaging that. There's like a vacuum sealed in there somehow. Oh, there we go. Get in there. Octopus hooks. Yeah, there you go. Thanks, Adam. See, I like octopus circle hooks, but those are octopus hooks. I like these. These will be great inshore. So it's a paddle tail, right? You can see the blue over the clear silverish with the red throat. Um, hook's got a rubber cover on it to protect you. And look at that tail. Look at that paddle tail. These. I like. What is your target species for inshore? Uh, Adam, inshore, I'm looking at redfish, flounder, trout, and we get some snapper. Uh, once in a while, we'll get, believe it or not, we'll get some uh, some Spanish max come inshore. But typically, it's redfish, trounder, and flout. Matter of fact, if you catch those three in one trip, that's called the Texas slam. Get a redfish, flounder, and trout in one trip. I like these little guys. Those are going to fish. I'll definitely, those will catch those inshore fish for sure. Okay. So I like them. That's definitely, those are a go. And then guess what? Boom. We got a second pack of them because these are the type of ones that you get bit off. Of. Hey, C Pro's in the house, man. Hey, C Pro. Glad you made it. We're just going over a, you know, I'd done those, uh, mystery tackle box and they had run out my wife got me four so i want to try something different so we're going through this salt box tournament grade uh quality equipment for a saltwater angler and i'm seeing there's stuff in here that is more offshore than what i do but so real quick we got two of these with the little paddle tails we got two of these bad boys i'll show you actually i got three of these and this is what it looks like I'm sure this is something you'd run offshore. Looks like a squid imitation or skirt, right? So we got three of those in there. And then we got five of these bad boys. And I think, I haven't taken them all the way apart, but I think they're all on one line. So I'm not sure. I'm thinking offshore for those two, but uh, Adam said maybe a flounder or something around. I've never fished with something like that for flounder, but that's where we're at. Uh, in the northeast, we have striper, bluefish, flounder, and some weak fish. I have no idea about the Pacific. And I'm I'm down in the Gulf. Gulf of Mexico is where I'm fishing at them. So, yeah, it's, it's a lot different than where you're at. All right. So that all that so far, right? And bust out the first big one. Look at that bad boy. Look at that bad boy right there. Okay, he's a popper, right? Look at that in. You can see it on his mouth. He's got some great colors. This is my top water. Sling it out there. Hope something big 
is hungry and wants to eat off the top of the water. I haven't opened, again, none of these yet. We've taken him out to look at them. He's rattly, I can already tell you that. That hook is hooked. See the rattles in them? Get a good look. Look, he's iridescent. Look at the colors on him. And then you see he's popper, right? So you're just jerking him across the top of the water and going to pick up some big, big fish, right? Striper plug. All right, Adam. So that's something you guys go after, striper. I see people fish these plugs for all kinds of fish. But, yeah, imagine a big old striper come up and tear it up. Yeah, a lot of rattle. A lot of rattle. See, pro the three squid skirts. Is a daisy chain for trolling. That's what I thought, brother. That's what I thought. That's cool. I'll be honest, man. I don't have offshore capability right now, boat wise and all that. So when I, if, when I come out there in October, Sea uh, Pro, I might be bringing some of this stuff to you. All right. The last lure in here is just a great big old silver spoon, right? Hopkins with the uh, feathered tail on it. These guys. Uh, even in freshwater, I use a smaller version of these. They work really well. You can cast them out and bounce them off the bottom coming back. Or if you're over the top of something, you can fish them straight down and kind of jig them, right? So we catch stripers in lakes on something like this, uh, Adam. So, yeah. Grew up in Connecticut on Long Island Sound. Oh, shit. You're from up north there, too. Didn't know that. All right, so you think we're done. I just took out a whole bunch of gear out of that box, but we're not. This is what surprised me the most. Look what they have in this sucker. It even has a dang tackle box in it, right? Put all that stuff in, I guess, all right? You got the dividers in there. It's got the good latches. Oh, maybe not the good latches. That's the first time I tried to open it. Hold on, guys. It's an emergency call from the wife. Yes, ma'am. Okay. I'm on live stream. What's up? It's all right. Yeah, it's sitting in the kitchen. All right. All right. Love you. Bye. She, shop she had to go shopping, and she forgot that uh, we we're doing a live stream tonight. Okay, so they're supposed to come off like that. I didn't realize that. That's pretty. Maybe it's not quite as heavy duty and fancy. But good night, everyone. The Mo's already out of here. Peace out, Mo. $14 value and two items. Not bad. Yeah, I think the box, if I remember right, because I only bought one. I didn't want to do the three month and all that. And the more you buy, like if you do a, a six month, you're going to pay cheaper individually per box. I think this was about a $20 box. Um, so, yeah, I mean, from what I'm seeing, I think it's probably worth 20 bucks, right? But, yeah, Sea Pro. So when I come to Florida, all these offshore all these offshore ones, I don't get to go offshore here, just in, inshore, will probably be coming your way, brother. Oh, I don't know. Did I show you these ones, too? Darren's Northern Life made it into the house. Finally, about time, Darren. Yeah, because we're on the new channel, man. We've only put that out a million times, brother. You've been too busy up there catching all them dang walleye and pike and all that other stuff, which I'm jealous of. So I had a pack of these also, uh, C Pro. I don't know if you've seen these before. It's a soft plastic, but it's a squid soft plastic. So pretty neat. Pretty neat. So at least a couple things in here I know I'll be able to use. And then what I can't use... Got a little box of mustad hooks. Darren, this is, yeah. Yeah, we started this one, well, it's new, but we've been here since February. So a couple months. Uh, it's got the live streams and it's got the um, vlogs that I'm doing on here. Yeah, I knew there was a second channel, but didn't know the name. Ah, there you go. Well, now you know. It's AJ Outdoors live streams. <laughs> All right, guys, what else are we talking about? So we talked about earlier about uh, being out and about. We got the order to wear masks, and me and Audrey had to travel over to my daughter's house to help her with a fiasco project she was doing. It was a fiasco for them. 
and had to stop at Lowe's, which is one of our outdoor or, uh, you know, Home Depot type stores. And man, I'm one out of five people maybe were wearing masks. And, and me and the wife were wearing them because you're supposed to. And I, I'll be honest, when they first said, hey, you should wear a mask, I was like, eh, I'm a tough old guy. I don't want to trade in my man card and wear some stupid mask. But I've gotten older and smarter, as I said earlier, and hopefully that's true, and realized I'm not wearing the mask for me as much as I'm wearing it for those around me, my loved ones, and anybody else I might come in contact with. I don't risk. Uh, getting exposed and then exposing other people. So we wore the mask, me and Audrey did. And it's not comfortable and it's hot and all that, but we did it. And I just wish more people would do it. And I was surprised that the store employees weren't wearing them. Some were, but the vast majority were not wearing them, which is kind of surprising. So, so that's some of the stuff we talked about. We looked over that box. We talked about that. We talked about closures. Uh, still waiting for some folks from other places. In the, hey, Seapro uh, uh, Fishing, brother, have you had any, are your ramps or anything like that being affected yet? I know we've had all kinds of beach closures down there in Florida, but what about ramps and stuff? And Darren, I know you're way up there in the frigid north in, the, uh, in Canada. What are you guys seeing? Are you seeing any kind of closures or anything? Prime Minister even moved to ICU. Dude. Okay, Adam, I seen earlier today that he was taken to a hospital. So now he's in ICU. Wow. There's several uh, leaders in different countries that have, that have been positive for it. So, And, you know, if you look at the age groups, most of those folks up there in those leadership roles in governments are usually not young whoopersnappers. Ice fishing season is slowing down, so should have more time to stop in. All right, Darren, that's good. I'm glad. No, I'm enjoying your ice fishing. So, you know, I, I don't want that to end. But So, Darren, are you seeing any changes up there as far as COVID-19 affecting where you can and can't fish and that kind of stuff? And same with you, Seapro. Uh, are you seeing, Wayne, are you seeing any changes down there about where you guys can and can't fish right now? I'm just curious. I mean, that's one of the things we put out there to talk about was uh, how they actually extended our ice fishing season by five days. Responsible excursions are encouraged. Responsible. So that's key, and I like that. Uh, Mahi Run is starting. Dang, I have a private ramp I can use. Oh, that's perfect, Pro. And, you know, from what I've seen where they are closing ramps and stuff like that, it's not the fishermen it, that's the or beaches. That is the reason that they're closing these ramps and stuff. It's those other knuckleheads. And, you know, I don't know how else to term it. Six foot, social distancing. But when you have a bunch of people putting in boats and going out to a sandbar, and they got boats parked all over the sandbar, and they're all partying together, that's not social distancing. And so the authorities see that, and they're like, well, how do we stop that? Well, we close the boat ramps. And who's that affect indiscriminately? That fisherman that has one or two people on his boat they're being responsible and just want to go out and do some fishing. So that kind of blows. Adam, drunken yahoos. Yep, party on the sandbars. Exactly. Exactly what's happening. It's a shame. Same with the beaches. It's not the surf fishermen because they don't want people around them. We spread the heck out, right? It's the beach goers that want to go and all jump in the water and play together and set up bonfires and be all on top of each other. And then they decide, hey, you know what? We've got to shut down the beach because they're not following social distancing. So that's what happens, folks. That's the way it, That's the way the cookie crumbles. Where's Stanley Orchard, everybody? I should send him a text message and say, where are you at, Stan? Working late or something. I don't know. So you guys got anything coming out? I, I don't have... I need to go to Texas then. <laughs> There's Mike. Come on down, Mike. Yeah, we got too many knuckleheads down here, Mike. You guys probably don't close down any of your uh, boat ramps or anything yet up there in the Dakotas. Darren, all the Indian reservations in Canada have completely locked down because they have zero immunity. So it's affecting access to a lot of great fishing areas. Well, who has immunity? I don't know if anybody has immunity to this. You know what I mean? 
I think everybody has zero immunity, but I can understand them. You know, if I can secure my area I'm in, yeah, I would probably do that too. Uh, Adam, are they still spring getting spring breakers? No, spring breakers are done. We had a bunch of them from, I think it was Texas A&M, one of these big universities, went to Mexico for spring break, came back, like six of them have uh, the virus now. It's like irresponsible little shits. But, you know, when you're a kid, you know, college and all that, I guess you're irresponsible. That's just where you are. Uh, oh, so, Mike, you're seeing the Indian Reservation shutting down, huh? See, pro no spring breakers. Have, yeah, they've settled down here, too. Ah, there's Stanley Orchard. Man, your ears should be burning, brother. We've been talking about you, or at least I have. I'm like, where's Stanley? I've gone through a whole saltwater turnip box. I'm not doing it again, Stanley. You're going to have to go rewind and watch it. Uh, and we've been talking now about stuff closing down around us. Have you heard anything? Have you heard anything new, Stanley, down there? I know, I think Packery Jetties are still down, Mustang Island, but other than that, I don't know what else is closing. And welcome aboard, Stanley, after I talked about you. I was looking for my phone. I'm going to text Stanley. Where is Stanley? Started later so he could get in here, and he's still not here. Kind of talked about how, you know, some, some like I said, we we're driving around this weekend, having to go back and forth to my daughter's house, working on something on her house for her, which was a heck of a project. And uh, we had to stop at Lowe's and places like that. And, you know, they said, hey, wear masks. We it spreads talking to people. And three out of four people weren't wearing masks. It's like, do you, where do you live? Do you even pay attention to what's going on? Ridiculous. I can understand if I was somewhere where, hey, nobody in this county even has it. Okay, and we're in the county, maybe we're good. But here in San Antonio, we've got 12 deaths. I think we got like 4,000 or so confirmed cases. So, yeah, you might want to be a little more careful. How are the burn ins? Adam, man, I'm sitting here talking to you. I ain't got a chance to try them. They're in the kitchen. Wife's coming home with the groceries, and then we're going to have burnt in sandwich. That's what she said she wanted today. I want some brisket burnt in. So she had this little bitty trimmed up brisket that she had bought, right? And so I was like, yeah, it won't take much. Spiced it up, threw it on the smoker, got it to a certain temp, brought them inside, cut them up. She threw some more spice on them, some brown sugar, I think some barbecue sauce, and then they're in a little tin pan now, put them back on the smoker, and gave them another hour, I think, and that's supposed to make them into burn ends. So non-typical burn ends, I guess you'd call them. But it's supposed to be real good. They look good. I snuck a bite, you know, when I took them out the first time, not just now, but before we put the spices in it, back on them. And they're good. So they're going to be a little burnt end sandwich, I guess. They're going to be delicious. Uh, Stanley, nothing new. Not sure who's closed, but Nick Myers will report from Bob Hall every morning. Oh, that's cool. Uh, that's over on that uh, Corpus Christi fishing forum, right? Um, Darren, which is why they use smallpox to absolutely decimate the natives. Yeah, they did that here in the U.S. too. Those white folks had a much better survival rate. Yeah, that's true, Darren. Um, Mike, the masks do help you, he said. So, you know, unless you have some scientific proof that masks don't help, I'm going to go with better safe than sorry and wear the mask. Yeah, sneak bite, Adam. I did get a sneak bite. That's true. <laughs> yeah, if it's spittle, you know, when you're talking to each other, that's how spittle, you don't know it, but it's there. Um, some of the stuff I do for work deals with that kind of stuff, biological agents, which is biological. So, yeah, a mask does help. It, it catches it. It's a filter, you know, just like anything else. Is it perfect 100%? No. But is it better than, yeah, good answer, Mike. Uh, is it better than walking around with no mask? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, he's got a YouTube channel, Stanley? I didn't know he had a YouTube channel. Man, you have to share that with me. Let me know. I haven't checked out. I've gone to... Corpus Christi Fishing Forum, and I clicked on, you know what, I guess I never really noticed that is, his video is a YouTube video. I never, all right, never mind. Dun. All right, what else we got to talk about, gentlemen? 
don't think there's any ladies in the house, so I can say gentlemen. Um, what else do I got going on? Nothing else going on. So tomorrow I got another uh, vlog coming out. It's been a minute because I'm only going to do those when I feel it. You know what I mean? When I feel like, hey, there's something I want to talk about. And this one actually is going to be a fishing related vlog. And it's I don't want to get into the discussion here because it's going to steal from the vlog. But it's basically us versus them fishermen. You know, hey, I hate the way those people fish. The technique they use should be outlawed and, and you guys suck ass. And, you know, you guys shouldn't use live bait because that's cheating and you guys suck ass and that kind of stuff. So I did a little vlog talking about that. Uh, and that is going to come out sometime tomorrow on this channel, right? For those of you that uh, haven't been on this channel before or in a while, all the vlogs are here. My other stuff is on the other channel. Uh, seems like everyone has a YouTube channel. Yeah, right, Adam. Found out my elderly female co-workers has a kayaking channel. Oh, that's pretty cool, especially for elderly. That's, you know, if they can get out there and kayak, that's better than me. I've never kayaked before, and I've gotten real interested in the last couple of years, but then I think about my broke up back, bad hips, and think, uh, how comfortable would I be sitting out on a kayak? At least on my boat, I can get up and move around. That's one of the things I need to do. Once in a while, I need to stand up, walk around. I can't just sit all the time or the back gets sore. can't stand all the time or the back gets sore, so I move around. So, yeah, if they're elderly and they're kayaking, hua, more power to them. Uh, what else is going on, guys? Stanley, what you got coming out? Congratulations, Mr. Stanley Orchard. He posted a vlog. Matter of fact, I'm going to steal his thunder. Go check out Stanley's latest vlog. Remember, he was uh, temporary quarantined and had to get the test for COVID-19. So he got his test results. That's what I'll tell you. And that just came out. I think he released that today, as a matter of fact. <laughs> oh, I'm bitter at live bait guys right now. There you go. I got beat in my tournament yesterday by a guy tossing live bluegills. So here's my argument for you. I'm assuming this is a bass tournament. Um, live bait legal in the tournament. You can't hate, brother. Um, don't hate the player, hate the game, or whatever that saying is. I've never seen a bass tournament down here where you're allowed to use live baits because I know the ones they do on Canyon Lake, if I could use minnows based on their results I see, I would probably place at least me and Joel almost every tournament um, because when we go crappie fishing, we catch bass all the time on live minnows. Um, but I've never seen a bass tournament here in this area where you're allowed to use live bait, cut bait. It's all lures. That's it. So, you know. Try to get them to change the rules, man. That's kind of a thing for me, too. I prefer standing. You know, Stanley. Negative what, what? Wait a minute. Negative what, what, Stanley? I miss what you're negative what, what in. Uh, happy for you, Stanley Orchard. Good, Grant. Live bait is legal in the tournament. Yeah, Adam. So, you know, you can't hate, hate the angler. They're following the rules. They're doing what they think gives them the best chance to win the tournament. That's their focus. So, you know, if you're involved in organizing the tournaments and maybe you discuss the rules and maybe you see if you can get a rule change, you know, that's just like when we had tournaments here. I was tournament director for uh, catfish tournaments here, and certain people would want the, the rules to be changed. And I was like, look, we're a club, right? We're a nonprofit organization. But non-members don't get a vote or say in how things happen. So if you want to influence how we do things, become a member, and then you have a voice. You know what I mean? Uh, so, yeah, that's that or start your own or, or go to one that doesn't allow it. I Yeah, I've seen, you know, I've seen folks down in Florida. Now, not tournament fishing again. I've just, I've never seen people live bait fish tournaments. For bass, right? Everything else, yeah, but not bass. Um, but I have seen, like, guides use big old mullet like this, finger mullet, I guess, uh, down in Florida to catch, um, or not mullet, but uh, 
Uh, ah, you know what I mean. Anyways, they're catching big bass, and they're teaching their folks to throw it out there by those stick-ups, you know, and let it swim around a little bit, and boom, big, huge Florida bass. So I guess that's cool, you know. Uh, but when I have a limit on all artificial and they just set – there with bluegill under a bobber. I think the skill level is a little different. It is, Adam. That's what I'm saying. That's why. But apparently that tournament organization isn't promoting that your your skill like you're talking about. That's what I'm saying. You either get them to change, start a different tournament organization, or find another one that recognizes that. Like I've, you know, I don't want to defend the bluegill guy, but I've never heard of a tournament for bass where you're allowed to use live bait. That's just Completely odd to me. You go saltwater, man. I don't know if Sea Pro's still in here, Wayne. But saltwater, you're using live bait a lot, especially if you go off coast. I mean, preferably if you can get live bait, that's what you want to use. So, so I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I mean there's different. You troll in, and so you're still going to use maybe ballyhoo, ballyhoo, but they're not live, but you're still using them as bait. So. It just depends on what you're doing. Cat fishermen, uh, a lot of cut bait, you know, in the tournaments. There's no rules. Uh, Grant says me neither. <laughs> um, and if you're looking for flathead, you're usually using live bait. You got your best chance to catch a flathead with some kind of light little bluegill. You know, like you're I'm surprised your little bass fisherman doesn't catch into some uh, flatheads too. <clears throat> yes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. C Pro. Live bait offshore unless you're jigging or trolling. Yep. Adam, all my club tournaments allow live bait. Wow. We are a multi species club. Oh, okay. With a 10 fish limit. Five bass and five other species pickerel, crappy, or perch. All right. Well, you know, that's your club. That's that's way. I mean, you could still uh no, you couldn't make you couldn't change that. If I'm fishing a lake in the tournament and it's a 10 fish limit, no matter what I catch, and those are the fish I'm catching, yeah, live bait's going to do good on pickerel. It's going to do good on bass. Yeah, that's tough. I don't know what the answer is, brother. But the day you whoop their butts with uh, artificials will be the day you can talk some smoke because you outfished them with a much more difficult uh, challenge. Went, f went snook fishing Saturday night using freshwater speed shads. They love them. Freshwater. So shad, we use a lot of shad here. We've got threadfin shad, uh, and there's another one. I forgot the name of it offhand. Uh, but I've never heard of speed shad. But the snook loved them, huh? That's pretty cool. Hey, Grant, I've caught some pretty good bass on bluegill. Yeah, I'm sure you have. They'll eat them. Stanley, yeah, ninety percent of what I do is with live or cut bait. Yeah, I'm inshore fishing. Uh, started out ninety percent live because we were using a popping cork and shrimp. You know, it's a live shrimp, um, and we've done cut bait and we've done some live bait, um, uh, pin perch and stuff like that for the big bull reds. Um, but well, most recent trips down there, I've thrown a lot more lures just because I'm just interested in that, you know, learning that type of lures. And, and I've caught some fish on them. Stanley, that trip where we met at Packery, those that trout and that red I caught before you got there were on a lure, which the first fish I've caught on a lure on Packery. Uh, so that was kind of cool and exciting to me. So I'm doing more of that. And I really want to find that pro perfect time for that top water bite. I've got tons of top water lures, but I have yet to catch a fish down there in the salt uh, on top water. And I really, really am looking forward to having that big red come up and slurp something off the top water. Uh, so I'll keep trying. Uh, Adam, I'm, le I'm leading angler of the year right now with all artificial hats. See, there you go, brother. This was the first event where the live bait outperformed me. And you're doing your thing, man. Good. Good for you. Speed Chat is the Bash Pro version of high tech. I do not know. I didn't I, when you say shad, oh it's a soft plastic. 
Now I see what you're saying. All right. Paddle tail. That's probably one of the things in the box that I didn't share. I don't think C Pro you saw it, but the other guys did, and I like them if I can find them real easy. You can take through this whole freaking thing. <laughs> this was such a big box of yours. All right, I'll show you here. These little paddle tails here. Okay, this is a saltwater box. But I'm going, I, I'm liking these guys. I'll show you. These will definitely work in short. And they got them packaged really well. Best package thing they have in here. You look at these guys and look at the colors on them. Got that blue on top iridescent kind of clear you get the red at the throat area and then the little paddle tail they're weighted right there's a weight inside them here and then of course the hook on top those will catch some fish i'm definitely looking forward to throwing those inshore i know i'll be able to catch something on some of those so that's probably out of that whole box i got two packs of those in there that's probably my favorite thing they sent so pretty cool all right, guys, we got like 10 minutes. Let's see where we at. I'm going to catch up with you guys. Uh, Supro says, it's true about the speed shad. Stanley, I love chucking a, a – yeah, mirror lure, mirror dime type or mirror – okay. I found a line for cut bait or my biggest producer. Yeah, cut bait, yeah. Just like live shrimp when you're inshore. Everything eats live shrimp. See, pro green and silver work, worked fast. Okay, that's good. Uh, Adam, you should check out Mourner Hooks for the Speed Shad. Grant, all right, got to go rebound for my son. Talk to you guys later. All right, have fun, Grant. Be careful, be safe. You guys don't go out there mixing around with the population. Uh, let's see what else is going on. So, yeah, I got a vlog coming out tomorrow on this channel talking about kind of what you were talking about, Adam, but in different realms. Um, Stanley had a video vlog come out today, right? Um, C-Pro, you went fishing. You caught fish. You got a video coming out, brother? I don't know why this thing's not focusing now. Come on. Come on. You can do it. So that's one thing I noticed with this webcam is if I hold something up to it, it takes a while for it to, to start focusing back here again. It's not that important. You guys don't need to be focused on my ugly mug anyway. All right. Who else got video coming out? Video or a live stream? Anybody doing live this week? Stanley, you guys going live this week? Adam, do you saltwater guys ever use freshwater fish as bait or saltwater fish? My friend swears by using bluegill as bait in the ocean. Man, I just can't imagine how they would survive on the hook very well. I mean... I don't know. I, I I never have. My answer is no. Never even thought to. Uh, Wayne says, I don't usually make videos of my inshore stuff unless I catch something awesome. Videos on my offshore stuff mostly. We'll do a couple inshore for us. We're sitting home. We're under, you know, uh, stay-at-home orders. We want to watch some videos, brother. I don't care if you catch uh, a hard head that big. I want to watch it. <laughs> Stanley, I think we're going live Wednesday. Okay, so Wednesday evening, watch for Stanley Orchard to go live. Wayne's last video was five days ago, so it's this time for another video, Wayne. I say that, but I haven't put out a video. My last one was that trolling motor work I did. Stanley's going to attempt to double video to double videos for the rest of 2020. Double videos. What do you mean by that? Two videos a week? Is that what you're saying, Stanley? <laughs> Wayne said, I don't want to give spots away. <laughs> well, it wouldn't work for, I, you know, I wouldn't be able to steal them because I don't know what the heck, because you're in Florida and I'm in Texas. But I could understand if you had people around. Oh, wow. Look what the cat drug in, folks. 
Mr. Steve Hall and Ash Outdoors just showed up. Said, uh, we caught nothing this weekend, so no video from me. All right, Steve, I'm glad you're here. If you came in earlier, I apologize for missing it. Uh, that's your first uh, comment that I saw. Aiming for 10 videos per month. Ooh, brother, you putting in the work. You go, Mr. Stanley Orchard. Yeah, Steve, I, you, I seen that little going crappie fishing. I'm like, man, I've never really found crappie in Michigan, so I, I want to know where you're going. But apparently not since you didn't catch none. I'm kidding. I'm glad you're here. So you got on the water. So I just I was telling people earlier, we saw a report that Michigan said no boating, period. So obviously that's not true. That's one of those false reports. Fake news, as they call it, right, Steve? You guys got no problem getting on the water up there? Sweat labor. Yeah, absolutely. Getting ready to close this. Incorrect. Good. That's good to hear. Now, our uncle and aunt up there also told us you're only supposed to have two people on a boat. Now, I don't know if that's a location thing, but that sounds kind of weird, too. So is that, that's not what you're hearing, apparently. Because I imagine you probably had three to four people on the boat with you. It's crazy how, you know, social media is pretty awesome in the fact that you can get information rapidly and share information rapidly. But <clears throat> because of that, it goes unchecked. And so bad or false information can spread as quickly as, as facts, you know. And that's that's un, unfortunate. That's a byproduct of social media. I mean, for the most part, like all, all new technology, usually there's a very good use for new technology and it does great things for us. But there's always that that byproduct of bad stuff that comes with it. Four minutes, guys. As long as there is no more than five people in a boat, they must all be from the same address, residence. Oh, wow. All right. <laughs> yeah, I figure if you're all, you know, uh, staying locked down in the house together, you might as well all be on a boat together. But if you add people from different addresses, now there goes that social distancing out the window. I can see that. Okay. So... No more than five people on a boat. Shoot, I don't even put five. My vote's only, you know, as far as Coast Guard is concerned, only certified for up to four. So I don't have an issue with that. Mm. If they had that rule here, I'd have to tell Joel to kick rocks. He ain't, he ain't going to be able to get on a boat with me. And vice versa. I wouldn't be able to get on his boat. Exactly. Can't take my buddy in my boat. All right, that's how I'd be. I wouldn't be able to take Joel with me and he... He wouldn't be able to take me on his boat. So I'm glad that hasn't happened here yet because I'm trying. This coming Friday, we got rain forecasts all week. Uh, but if it's low enough forecast by Friday, I'm trying to get the boat out there. I've got to make sure that troll motor is doing right and, and just get out on the water. You know what I mean? <clears throat> Steve, I only have two friends anyways. <laughs> Uh, I got, you know, that's not far from the truth for me. I've got a lot of friends, but fishing buddies, they're different. You know, I got a lot of friends that don't really fish that much. So they're friends. Uh, but fishing buddies that I go fishing with, you guys see it in my videos. There's Joel and there's Shay. That's pretty much it. You know, other than family, you know, the wife, daughter, them, whatever I can get them to go with me. I love that. But yeah, fishing buddies outside the family is Joel and Shay. So yeah, I only got two fishing buddies, too, there, Steve. All right, folks. Food's ready. Wife's home. She's mad I didn't help her with the unloading the groceries. That's your guys' fault. So, <laughs> so we're going to sign off now. I'm going to say our goodbyes. I appreciate you all stopping in. Um, I'll keep doing these until I'm just sitting here talking to myself. Uh, which might not be too far off in, in the distant future. But uh, the vlogs will keep coming. Like I said earlier, I just do them when I feel like there's something I want to talk about. So next one, again, is Fisherman versus Fisherman. It should be out sometime tomorrow. Uh, again, Stanley's going to go live Wednesday, potentially. 
Uh, he had a video vlog come out today. Check that out. And I guess I will catch you all on the flip side. And I will enjoy those burn-ins. Thank you very much, Adam. Appreciate it. All right, folks. Peace out.